Okay, so today we're doing standard deviation and we've actually seen this idea before when we learned scatter plots. So when we learned scatter plots, we had our data on our graph and then we had a line going through all of the data points. And we were asked to interpret R, R squared, and S. And S was the one that um, was the description of how far away on average is the actual data from the prediction line. That's really standard deviation. So now we actually learn like the, the basics of standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of spread. So the, uh, the most appropriate word for spread is the variability. So standard deviation is how we measure variability or spread. Um, standard deviation describes the variation of data values around the mean. Around the mean. So instead of the prediction line like we did in scatter plots, what we're most interested in is how far are the observations from the mean. It measures the typical, it measures the typical distance of the values from the mean. So typical and average describe the same thing. S sub X, which in our calculator shows up as capital S X. Is the standard deviation of a sample, which to us is just a data set. SX is when you're given a data set, a sample, and you use your calculator or you calculate by hand the standard deviation. Now, if you are able to actually get the entire population, so you are able to take data from the entire population, that's sigma. That's this little guy right here. And in our yet next unit, we talk about sigma a lot. So sigma is the deviation, the standard deviation of a population. And it is rare that we know that. So down here is a visual of standard deviation. Now in both of these cases, the flagpole represents the mean. In both of these cases, the flagpole is the mean of the distribution. It is in the center of the crowd because if you have a good data set, your mean and your median are approximately the same, which means your mean is at the center of your data. This left-hand side is a visual representation of a data set that has a larger standard deviation. So this one is as standard deviation gets bigger, the data is more spread out from the mean. So your observations are farther away from your flagpole. On the right hand side, it's the opposite. As your standard deviation gets smaller, your data is less spread out. Which one do we want? We want small spread. Because most of the time, we're estimating a value. So we're estimating what is the average score on the 2020 AP exam? What is the average height? What is the proportion of people that agree with something? We're estimating some value. So we want our estimates to be very close to each other. Because if they're spread out, that means that we can't really rely on what we're trying to find the value of. Because our data differs too much. We want it to be close together. So to show you how to actually calculate standard deviation by hand, we get a data set that has 11 observations. 
Um, we typically do not calculate standard deviation by hand because it's, it's a little bit more involved than um, some of the other calculations that we do. So our 11 um, observations are high school students who are asked how many close friends they have. Um, we're supposed to make a dot plot and then find the standard deviation. So I'm going to make my dot plot right here. I'm going to put my x-axis, so that's number of close friends, like right on top of the table. And then I can draw my x-axis, leaving a little bit of room for the numbers. I'm going to go from 0 to 8. It doesn't matter if you stop at 6 or if you want to start at 1. You don't have to have the same scale as me. That doesn't sound good, whatever's happening out there. Okay, so once we have our scale, we can put our dots down. Once you have it, it's approximately roughly, well, it's approximately symmetric. Maybe an outlier at six. Having six close friends might be unusual. We have a peak at three. So that was the most frequent answer. Okay, so to find your standard deviation. The first thing that we do is find the mean because the standard deviation is the average distance from the mean. So we have to know what that is. We can just do this one um, by hand because there's only 11 observations. So we're going to add all the observations and divide by 11. Check in in about 20 seconds to see if we have the same mean. About 10. Three. Okay, I have three. Uh, remember that mean is denoted with X bar. So now we know our typical observation. Our uh, students typically have three friends. Now what we want to do is calculate the deviation of each value from the mean. So the deviation is fancy for how far away from the mean is each observation. The notation that they use is i and x sub i. So i is your observation number. So we have 12, just kidding, 11 observations. So down this table, I'm just listing those. So x sub i is the value of the first observation. The value of the first observation is 1. The value of the second observation is 2. Third, 2. And so on. So 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 6. If it's helpful to you, you could write above here that 1 is x sub 1, observation 1. 2 is x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, 
all the way up to x sub 11. That's just asking you or describing observation 1, observation 2, so on. Okay, our deviations. For the first one, it wants us to take observation 1 and subtract the mean. So 1 subtract 3 gives us negative 2. Why is it negative? Because it's 2 below the mean. You're always going to have observations below and above. Okay, next one, 2 subtract 3 is negative 1. So that observation is 1 below the mean. Then the next one's negative 1, and the next one is negative 1. Okay, the fifth observation is a 3. Subtract 3, we get 0 because it's the same value as the mean. So there is no distance. 0, 0, 0. The ninth observation is 4. We subtract the mean of 3. The deviation is 1. It is 1 above the mean. And the last one, 6. Subtract 3. The deviation is 3. It's 3 above the mean. So those are all of our distances from the mean. So far, so good? Yes? Okay. The next thing is square the deviations. Why? Because we have negative and positive numbers. We don't want our negative numbers to cancel out our positive numbers, so to get around that, we square them. Because when you square negative 2, it turns into positive 4. And when you square negative 1, it turns to positive 1. So we have 4, 1, 1, 1, zeros, 1, 1, ninth, from there we add all the squared deviations. So we just add these, which should be easy because they're smaller numbers, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 18. This is called the variance. And they don't really talk about it that much in this unit. But then all of a sudden when we start reviewing for this class, they start talking about the variance a lot. So variance is your deviations squared. This is your variance. So over here, unfortunately, the little um, bracket makes it seem like once we divide by n minus 1, that's the variance, but it's not. It's the sum of the squared deviations. So I'm trying to highlight all in the same color what variance really is. It's all of the differences squared. Once we have that, we divide by n minus 1. So 18 divided by 10 gives us 1.8. And then we're supposed to square root that. So root... 1.8 will give you your standard deviation, and I believe it's 1.34. So that's this formula right here. And I've broken it down into the steps, but you could have just done it like this. You could have just put big root 18 over 11 minus 1. Either one works. So the average distance that our data is from the mean is about 1.3 friends. 
Are you hanging in? Okay. So the one of the most important parts is interpreting. So to interpret, all of them look this way. The number of friends typically varies. Typically varies. And this is another one where they're like super picky about their phrasing. They want to see you using the phrasing typically varies. By about 1.34 friends from the mean of three friends. So on average, the observations are within one friend, approximately one friend of the mean. I have two. So I'm just gonna highlight this bottom part because that is the framework for all of my interpreting. Okay, so now the rest is just properties. We don't even have to take notes for the top half. It's just important things to know about standard deviations. So more important than calculating it, because they're very rarely going to ask you to actually calculate it are the properties that describe the usefulness of standard deviation. So the first thing is you can only use standard deviation when you're using the mean to describe center. Otherwise, your distribution is skewed or you have outliers. And you cannot use standard deviation when you have skew or outliers. So that's what I'm going to write next to this one, is that cannot, we cannot use SX when there is skew and or outliers. The reason for this is because just like the mean, standard deviation takes into consideration all of the data values. So if you have very large or very small data values, it's gonna make your standard deviation larger or smaller than is accurate for your data set. So it's just like mean, it is not resistant to outliers. Are we kind of okay there? So. S sub X standard deviation is always greater than or equal to zero. It is very rarely zero though. If your standard deviation is zero, that means that every single value in your data set is the same value as the mean. It's all the same value. You have a uniform distribution. So most of the time it is positive because it's describing a distance. We don't describe distances with a negative number. And then, as we talked about on the previous page, as observations become more spread out, the value of S sub X gets larger. Um, standard deviation does have units of measure. So just like on the previous page, we said that the standard deviation is 1.34 friends. You'll have ones on money. Your standard deviation will be, you'll put a dollar sign on it because it has units of measure. And then lastly, like I've already mentioned, um, standard deviation is not resistant to outliers. Standard deviation is not resistant to outliers. A few outliers can make standard deviation very large because we square the deviations. So not only is it like mean, it's gonna be larger or smaller, but it's gonna be even larger or smaller because of squaring it. Are we okay on those few things? Is that a yes? So all that's left is interpreting. 
I'm going to interpret one more with you, given some information, and then you'll try two on your own, and that's it for this lesson. So the distribution of the fat content in 12 hamburgers has a mean of 22.83 grams and a standard deviation of 9.06 grams. That's very large. Interpret the standard deviation. The fat content of the hamburgers typically varies by about 9.06 grams from the mean oh don't write mean son of a from the mean of 22.83 grams. This part here is important because they want you to be adding context into your interpretation. That's the whole point is to give context for those values. So we don't just want to say the typical distance between the mean and the observations is 9.06. Okay, you try one. You try one and then I'll unfreeze. If you have time, you can try both, but what if you make a mistake? Yeah, I always do. Unless you get a nice number, which is very rare when you're doing standard deviation. About 15 seconds and I'll show you my Five. So I have the life expectancy of frogs typically varies by about four months from the mean of 18 months. Okay, try your Nissan Pathfinder one. Huh? Not sponsored. Okay, so biggest takeaway is make sure that you're using typically varies and you're including units. The number of miles a Nissan Pathfinder will last typically varies by about 10,000 miles from the mean of 100,000 miles. How'd you do? Did you do okay? Yes, no? Okay, so um, 
the check for understanding what they're really going to try to highlight for you guys is that standard deviation is not resistant outliers do affect standard deviation and how do you interpret standard deviation those if i had to condense this down that's what it what that's what this entire lesson is on if you struggle because you have one where you do need to do this by hand if you struggle on that, don't worry. The chances you're gonna have to do that on a test are so slim, very, very slim. Okay, 